I rap about what people go through and stuff in my neighborhood. And Before Presta will blow up out of the Toronto rap scene, coming straight out of Jane and Finch. Where I come from, it's like, it's like a recycling bin, you feel me? You get thrown in the bin and you do this shit, chef it up and come send it right back on the block, you feel me? Before Presta would drop hit songs with collaborations like Sleepy Hollow and Chef G, as well as tour across the world with the six god himself, Drizzy Drake. Before Presta would have over 10,000 followers on Twitter and over 236,000 followers on Instagram at the time of this recording. Now it's been a long time coming and someone I've been asked to document for a number of years now and we're finally getting her done. And for a kid his age, well Presta, he certainly made some friends in some high places. Drake's a real nigga too. He does real things for everybody. I mean, you see him. He did, a, he did a lot for my career too, you know? Now, I don't know a ton about Pressa, but I got you someone who does. The Six Plug himself Friday from We Love Hip Hop. With shout outs on the likes of The Weeknd and Tory Lanez to opening for Drake on his Boy Meets World Tour in 2017 at the young age of only 21. It would be easy to assume that Pressa has lived a charmed life. But the truth is that his journey has been anything but. Growing up in an area of Toronto ripe with gang violence and poverty, not to mention having a father locked up for life, well, it would have been easy for Presta to follow in his dad's footsteps. And for a moment there, well, he almost did. What was it like going to jail at such a young age? You were pretty young. It was just normal because basically like three or four years before that, the, the other generation got raided. But after a particularly close call, Presta was able to get his head straight and stick to grinding out music. Beginning his unlikely ascent through the ranks of Toronto's underground scene to where he is now. And I think we can both agree that he's on the threshold of being one of the biggest rappers in this country. What's going on guys, it's boy Michael McCrudden. And I'm Friday from We Love Hip Hop. Now, I don't know Pressa, but I did find you guys someone who knows all about him. We actually teamed up last month on a video for Chromaz, and seeing as Friday, well, he got all the Toronto interviews way before I get to these stars. Well, you should check out his channel, We Love Hip Hop. There's a link, it's above my head. It's down below. It definitely, if you're from Toronto, you gotta be plugged into this. We just dropped an in-depth interview with Pressa I filmed earlier this week. Let's roll the clip. We'll be on tour, and 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 it'll be like, my niggas be trying to get to girls and stuff, and they'll be like, yeah, you know, we would just want to see Presser first and then we'll bust it up. <laughs> All right, Friday, thanks for coming back to Famous Studios. Be sure to check out We Love Hip Hop. And now let's roll that intro. Hey, be sure to subscribe and hit that bell. Boom! Preston was born Quentin Armani Gardner on May 10th, 1996 in Toronto, Ontario, Canada. Now on June 15th, 1995, when Preston was no more than 36 days old, well, his father, Mark Anthony Gardner, well, he shot a man through the heart. His father would be sentenced to 15 years in prison on second degree murder charges upending young Presta's life before it really even had a chance to start. His mother was left alone to raise Presta and his older brother while also navigating the tricky and oftentimes dangerous streets of the Jane and Finch area of Toronto. Now for those unfamiliar, well let's just say it's a neighborhood notorious for its gang activity. Let's take a look. The schools don't really got that much money and the young, the young kids just have to be like, they have to, they're just, looking at the street, you know what I mean? I don't hang out at Jane and Finch. Have, do you, have you, you probably know better than I've, me. I've been there a few times, many times. Not me, <laughs> I don't know if I should go there. Now, Press's mother, she was faced with a dilemma and in order to provide for her family, well, she'd need to leave her house to get a job. Well, that would leave her young boys to wander the streets in their driftwood neighborhood. Now, Friday, what's that area like? I'm not sure. It's pretty close to the university over there by York University. It's kind of like, you know, a string of housing along one long road, you know, so it's, it's, it's pretty wrapped up in there. Is it Canada's Compton? Yeah, I guess it, you, can, you can call it that. It's maybe not similar to the way it looks, but just the way everything's encased and is in one community. It, you know, it's very similar. I'm just speaking of what I heard. I, I, I don't go to them parts. By the time he was 18, Will Tremar press his older brother, well, he was making and selling crack cocaine. By the fall of 2011, he would be considered the leader of a violent gang called the Young Bucks Killers. Now, the gang was linked to more than 60 arrests in an organized crime raid called Project Marvel. Presser was busted around the same time and incarcerated for four months as a youth offender. After the raid, evidence found that Presser's family home was linked to four separate shootings. The impression made by the police was that Shamar was in charge of the Young Bucks, and Presser was being groomed to be the next in line if anything were to happen to his brother. 
Damn, that is a crazy childhood. By 2014, well, big bro, he was convicted on 14 gun, drugs, and gang charges. Now at his hearing, he took full responsibility of his crimes and he asked for leniency when he stated, I feel like I failed my little brother and if I don't change my life, that kid is never gonna change his life and I have to change for him. Now, he was ultimately given a 10 year sentence not long after a close family friend named Wasi, well he was killed in a shootout with police outside a nightclub in the heart of the city. Now shortly after his death is when a music video popped up online titled Was Gang. It was a tribute to Wasi and was shot on the streets of Driftwood among the social housing units. It featured Robin Banks, an emerging rapper from Toronto, as well as Presta in his first big musical performance. He told Vice when that video dropped, everyone knew who Wasi was. He just died in a shootout with the police and so we used that publicity and turned it into a song and then the whole city was loving the art. So I give a lot of credit to Wasi because he helped me with my career. Now Preston had been dabbling in making music since he was in the fourth grade, which is when he recorded himself rapping to 50 Cent songs just to see what his voice sounded like. Go shorty, it's your birthday. <laughs> Go party like it's your birthday. <laughs> birthday anthem is a, is a great business idea, I tell you that. When I watched that movie, Get Rich or Die Try, and I was like, yo, that shit lit, bro, you feel me? I was like, okay, 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 it's just, it's like, it's like messages and, like he's painted a picture for us, you feel me? Eventually he began writing his own lyrics, but he wouldn't release any of it until 2016 when he began to post content online. Since that moment in time, Press has uploaded a ton of content and his music is mostly a throwback to the times when rappers would openly discuss guns, drugs, cars, women, and incarcerated family members. Well, some people might question if glorifying the gangster lifestyle that had already taken so much for him was the right thing to do for Pressa. Well, the music he makes is a way out of that lifestyle, even if it's also commentary on it. His next hit was Dead Me On and before he knew it, his content had found its way to the ears of Drake and he was subsequently invited by The Boy to perform on the European leg of his tour. Not only that, well, Pressa, he even started his own label, Blue Feather Records, as well as a website to sell his branded merchandise. Now, everything was going right until April 19, 2016, when suddenly, well, it just wasn't. That's the night when the Young Bucks killers hosted a party in a downtown Toronto condo building. After members of a rival gang showed up, shots were fired, yet miraculously, no one was hurt. But sadly, the night, it was far from over. Now, upset by having their party interrupted, well, members of the Young Bucks kidnapped two teenagers they believed to be affiliated with their rival gang, the Queens Drive Crips. The duo was beaten, forced to playing Russian roulette, and forced to perform sexual acts as well. Now, unbelievably, video clips, they were passed around online through social media. A ransom was paid and the teens were eventually freed. Within a week, police had arrested Pressa. He was announced as the instigator for the plot, though not the ringleader. His lawyer stressed at the time that Pressa was not an instigator and at most had a minor part in what happened, believing that his client would be exonerated at trial. A justice of the peace who heard the bail arguments didn't believe that Pressa's actions warranted further jail time and they granted him bail. Weeks later, the Crown, they agreed to a further lenience that will allow Pressa to tour in Europe with Drake. I mean, even the government here is a big fan of Drizzy. I know. <laughs> Let the boy go. Hey, that Drake card goes a long way. <laughs> Presta would eventually be cleared of all charges at the tail end of 2017 after being free on bail for 18 months. Other people arrested for the plot weren't so lucky. Both Lincoln Richard and Ty Shai Gordon were charged with six and nine prison sentences respectively. By 2018, while Press was ready to move on, dropping a single with Lil Uzi Vert titled 420 in London and being featured in the song Up and Down alongside Houdini. In 2019, he dropped his album Prestige in honor of his father's gang name and it debuted at the number one spot in iTunes Canada's hip hop chart. By the end of the following year, he was signing with Sony Music Canada in conjunction with his own Blue Feather Records and dropped one of the newest singles soon after, 96 Freestyle. As for where Presto will go from here, well actually he's over on Friday's show because they just did a sit down interview and you can actually hear more of the story. Oh, I run out of breath. You can hear more of the story. You guys talked about some of this stuff. Oh, we definitely get really in depth in his interview. You know, we talk about his coming up in the game and what he's doing now, so definitely check that out. All right, guys, so this was uh, this was just filler because the real content is there for coming from the horse's mouth. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this video. These collabs here, they take a lot of effort from us because we want to give you guys new and exciting stuff. But we also love to like uh, work with the city and, and I can't find like all these Toronto artists without going to Friday. So he's the guy in town. Be sure to give him a follow and I'll see you guys in another video. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed that video. Now we drop a new video each and every day. So here's a recent drop that you might enjoy. We handpicked that one for you because if you like this video, you'll probably like that. 
We also got playlists like over here. So click on that if you want to see a whole list of a bunch of videos we've dropped in the past. And if you're new to the Fame Gang, be sure to subscribe and turn on them post notifications. And I'll see you guys in another video. Boom!